ladies and gentlemen. Let's get started. I have thought a lot in the last 24 hours. How are, how do you know? Time to get your weekly sports fix. By the skin of their teeth, they lost. You know, then you can just ride in the whole thing. With sticks. Ride, 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 ride. You lucky I came back for this. She I was going to boycott. Yeah, so, right. You ain't boycott nothing, homie. I've labor, been trying, you've been boycotting disputes. for the last six months, homie. <laughs> you fucking. You think you 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 think you got busy? You think you busy? You have shit to do or whatever. Kids to chase around. Kids to drop off. Fuck, homie. You gotta get on my schedule, dog. That eight to six and and uh, every other weekend and you know. I ain't gonna lie. I miss it though. Hey, it I'm, is. I miss I'm it. Though. Telling you, dog. I'm telling you, I'm. I, I'm. I miss you too. That's 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 homie's version of saying he misses me a little bit. It is all love, all love. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, it's 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 Getting been rough. My sensitive side. <laughs> It's been rough the last couple of years with me moving and fucking getting a different job and working this job and that job and and doing yeah. this. It's just different character. It's just the way, you know, we did the the retail shit for so long. It's kind of like, you know, you get on that schedule and you kind of yeah. make your own schedule being the boss and you could do it. You could plan it. Now it's like, fuck, dude, I, I told you that before. I maybe on air, off air. I don't know. The eight to six, bro, like. Sometimes the six, if I, bro, I'm not even lying. I ain't going to lie, bro. It's I, I'm in bed by like eight or nine o'clock <laughs> most nights. If and I that's, that's in, the reason why people are so envious of, of that, that style of work scheduling. And that's why they call it the banker's hours. Everybody refers to anything like that as banker's hours. I don't do anything outside of this. Don't ask me for anything. So, yeah, yeah those are always envious situations. You mentioned before how we had those uh, inner, you know, schedules that were, that didn't have consistent, let's see, unless we created consistency Correct. in the schedule, because it couldn't be consistency based upon yeah. customer need. You got to, yeah. you got to look at what customers need. Customers need something all the time, don't they? You know, yeah, for sure. And you, you know what the wild part about it is, is even though it's only six o'clock, like, you know, I, granted, when I, when I worked in, in, the, in the other gig, you know, at five o'clock, I'd be out at five o'clock, bro. That extra hour, of course. Yeah. I lived it a uh, half a minute away. I still live 10 minutes away from right. the new gig, right? But, you know, the uh, the extra hour, bro, is just so, so much more uh, it lasts available. Two hours. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so I... much more available, man. Like, get off at five o'clock. I could be home ready to go by six. We could fire something up and ready to go, you know, you know, do something. We could ch chop it up for 45 minutes and, and be done with it. Then seven o'clock's here or yeah, seven o'clock's here, you know, good to go, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's wild, but it's good, man. It's good. You know, get, get into it. And uh, you know, schedules are wild. You know, you got kids, Always. you got, a, you got a new dog hanging out at the house, little taco uh, <laughs> chirping and biting in your ankles. Nacho, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nacho, little Nacho hanging out. This <laughs> is funny. Yeah, he shit. ain't quite a taco, a full taco yet. He's still, uh, <laughs> he's still just little nachos. A little nacho, but hey, you want to get into uh some uh sports mumbo jumbo? Fuck, we have no idea what we're gonna talk about. We'll just roll. I was through like, it, tell me what's been going on. Well, okay, so if because you haven't seen it, and we were just talking about this, we can get this out the way. Now we know that this uh New England Patriots story has been been told. It's already happened. It was real. It's been documented, right? This is the dynasty thing, right? The dynasty on Apple TV plus Apple plus TV, TV plus. whichever they call it, right? Yeah. It is, I'm telling you, all of our gaps that we assumed, thought about, are filled in. And now we're talking about actual individuals who were involved. I'm telling you, Matt Castle was interviewed. When have we heard anything from Matt Castle about his run that he had? So let me ask you this, homie. I haven't got it. I haven't got it yet. I haven't found it. I don't even know if I have Apple TV. I wish I knew what the password I give it to you, but I don't even know what the password <laughs> is. I, I, I think, I think uh, my brother has it on the regular TV. I might be able to see it, but... So let me ask you this. There's there's a question. I think I messaged this. Yeah, so this ahead. is a ten this is a ten part series, right? Yeah, they just completed six. Uh and they're doing it by weeks, similar mm -hmm. to what they did with the MJ doc, right? Mm -hmm. And is this worth 
a seg about. Is this worth something that we could talk about? Like we did the MJ documentary yeah. back in what was it, 2020, right? Yeah, no doubt. Because there's so many different crevices that you can jump into with this story because they start from the beginning. This is not just Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. This is a Patriots dynasty document documentary basically on how the uh, the winning nature started from the old uh, uh what, what is that dude's name the mascot for the patriots the uh, uh what pat is it uh patriot pat the patriot pat on the helmet and then mm -hmm. losing and bob Kraft just being a fan of the team with you know a paper mill company that wants his team to be a winner one day now so to no tom brady no nothing yet you know what's funny is because okay the why the reason why I ask is if it's a seg if it's something that we need to get into I need to watch you don't leave it take notes and I want okay are we gonna this is where I, I want to this is where I why I ask this question because in the MJ doc when it started everybody was fired up you couldn't right. pull up any social media and see and not or see talk it, yeah. about it okay yeah. right and and not know anything about it. And we went in. We went on a binge. We watched it. We talked about yeah. weekly when we did it. Right. We talked about that weekly. There's nothing else going on in 2020 when it happened. Right. Right. But my the reason why I ask is because I've literally seen maybe one clip, not one clip, but one person on Twitter that's pulled up or X or whatever you want to fucking want to call yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. That I've seen one thing documented uh, talked about right talking about it yeah talking about it so and that was from a patriots fan huh. who is uh on that is on there that somehow right. pops up on my speed so there's not there's nowhere near the mj no conversation in this so that's why it's kind of baffles me that yeah you know when you brought it up i like i said i didn't even know that it was going down i stumbled on it is it because it's on apple and it that's wasn't. what was going to be my thought is, is this a thing because nobody fools with Apple really, unless you get it when you get your new phone and they give you three months. If you, because you, most people aren't doubling back to get that Apple TV, unless it's a part of your little three month trial that you get when you first get your Don't phone get your tablet, started on all the or whatever. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, so I was, that was the first thing I was thinking was how did I catch this? And they're already four episodes in and I'm not, I haven't heard from, from mad dog. I heard none of the nobody talking, guys not even the person out the 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 other radio personalities. They're you know not as big as us, but right, you know the other ones that you know may be on the same level. They're not even talking about it either. That's what I was, that's what I tripped off of. So I clicked on it that one day, and like I said, when I was texting, I said it just fills in a lot of the detaily gaps about the story, um, because you get you get the Parcel story, how we even got to Bill Belichick from the Patriots' point of view. Mm -hmm. right because they went to the super bowl with bill parcells if you don't if you forget right yeah. that was brett Favre. you feel what i'm saying you mean, what do you mean brett Favre? you mean For patriots oh, versus brett Favre. Gre versus okay. uh, the green bay packers in that yeah. super bowl i believe it, it was 97 98 something of this nature the but bill, was, yeah okay i had just gotten up here i had just gotten up here and they made it to the super bowl without them and you know so they talk about that buildup of how quickly Kraft was able to transition this franchise that was garbage to at least getting Bill Parcells here and getting to the Super Bowl before Belichick, before Tom Brady. So he has his own thing. Uh, Parcells is real short. Uh, another enlightening thing that I saw like, again yeah, with the cat, uh, the uh, Matt Castle situation. And of course, you know that they go to the or the origin and they call up Drew Bledsoe and they get his opinion on I'm talking about real time opinions. OK, about with clips and everything about his opinion on. And I don't remember it being, uh, you know, that big of a thing between them. But the way that they laid it out was this was a major conversation that was being talked about, whether we bring back Drew because Drew is our guy that we paid all of these, all this bread to when overall number one. So like I said, we could, I'm telling you, we could, cause it's not over yet. It's okay. just a little so bit the, you over said halfway you're on, over. It's six and there's 10, it's 10 episodes, just like the MJ doc, right? So we're up to Aaron Rodgers. We'll leave it at, or Aaron, not Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Hernandez. Oh, that's okay. what we're up to. So we've already won a couple times. We've lost a couple times. Eli got us twice. 
already which they don't, uh, which is funny how they cover that story too and let me let me clarify this when you say us you're not talking about your team like no, you, right. you have nothing to deal with them you're because just talking the about Patriots the documentary doc. yeah. Yeah. yeah okay got you yeah because i, that's, I, I that's want to make sure because they... i wanted the people to know that you're you know not us you're not the not the patriots guy you're just following the to see the stories exactly exactly because you know it's a patriot story you know what i'm saying yeah. so when they're and that's the way that they're telling it is from like how the fans were feeling at the time and oh they go into it you know so for boston sports fans i'm surprised because you know how boston that's what sports i'm saying kicks off so much yeah and I, I that's what i'm saying it's like not anybody really talking about it no personality to talk about it, not even I, I don't know like i just i just don't see it and and i ain't gonna lie I, I'll, I'll tune in you know i i'm not a huge basketball fan but i was a bigger basketball fan back then when the mj was was going down right, right? everybody was everybody still is an mj fan but yeah. it just doesn't seem like this doc has a lot and with that being said too i was looking forward to the aaron hernandez doc which I heard mm. more about than I right. heard about this dynasty. Yeah. And I think that Aaron Hernandez doc was like on A and fucking E or some shit. Right. It right. Was. And and so, um, but yeah, I'll tune in. Let's see if we can, I'll see if I can catch up. I, if it's something, if it's a 10 part episode and it's two every week or whatever, bro, I'll tell you what, I'll wait until it's over and then I'll bench it, it because I want to be able to watch it yeah. and take notes and figure out what's going on. So we'll get into that more later, but yeah. I wanted to hear your, I wanted to hear your take on that because you were talking about it and you know, you were like, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You'll be know surprised at how many players that they got comments from and they so, got sit downs from. You'll and be so amazed, yeah. let's end this real quick with this. After you said you got, you've seen six episodes, right? Mm -hmm. So in the six episodes that you've seen, could they have done more or should they do less? Or is it just about right? Because you know how docs go. They have, okay. they, you know, up to each episode, they build it up, build it up, build it up. I get it. Right. But there are things that are left out through those episodes that could have been mentioned or brought up. What do you think? No, I think they're doing, I think they're doing it right. Because I think that there's so many people that are removed from the situation now that they're really giving it up. Like I said, you'll be surprised at how many players that they got to sit down. Everybody seems to be real forthcoming. They okay. Got, that's good. Straight they up. Got, uh, well, you know, the, you know, the one person who ain't forthcoming for stuff for shit, because he's on to Cincinnati. Right. So he's not saying anything. Mom is the word with Bill Belichick. He's not still not saying too much of anything, but they get an opinion from him about stuff, but he's got a guy that I don't think we've ever heard about that's been with him running stuff the whole time that he ain't an OC, he ain't a DC. He's, I don't even know. He looks like Colonel Sanders. Okay. And this man is basically Belichick's ace homie that we did not know about, who has been basically helping him run the Patriots without one of those coordinator titles. And I'm telling you, so you, the stuff ties in because we've gotten so many different news articles and stuff like that. So we know facts. Now let's get opinion from the people involved. So I think that they're doing it right from highlighting the Patriots point of view. OK, that makes sense. I, I just like I said, I just want to know. So, you know, I guess we'll we'll just stay on the, the football topic and we'll jump. We'll divert a little bit from. The NFL. We'll just go to the XFL. Oh, USFL. okay. I thought you wanted to run some combine drills or something. Real quick. Uh, not yet, but there is a combine, and that's why we're talking about a little bit about this. It's about the only Damn thing going combine. on. Um, quick, easy question. Another one for you. I'm going to answer it first. Uh, the XFL and USFL. You know, we mm -hmm. had those. You know, over the years, and you I know, all the stuff this. happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so they merged to the UFL. Right. And they have eight teams begins yep. March 30th. Will you tune in, homie, when it starts on March 30th? Because I will. I think I, so. I the reason like why to... I think so this time is because of the way that they've got it. So they basically put the two things to they put the two guys, but they're kind of conferenced out together. Mm -hmm. 
They split them down the middle, so it's almost like these guys. They pick these, these four. Guys. They pick these four. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a little unbalanced because I think uh, USFL or XFL or something doesn't didn't have the same amount of teams that they brought in together. So there's put two over here, but it almost yeah. seems like an XFL division versus a USFL division. Um, so you'll get a little, you know, the Battle Hawks in their situation on USFL uh, with you know in that kind of thing in conference. And then you'll get your XFL guys all competing under the same rules. So I'll love to see how they integrate some of this. And of course, play around with some of the rules so we can integrate them up top. Yep. You know, and, and, you know that they're working on the uh, getting rid of the chain gang, right? I know you heard that. I've been talking about, you know, uh, 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 the, the auto, evolution auto of stri- auto technology zones forever. Yeah. So now yeah. they're talking about doing this with a beam or a right. legit beam that works and testing that out. So maybe they'll test out some of the stuff and we'll get some of these new rules. Which they uh, should. That's, that's a top. great that's a great point, homie. Like you said, the 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 strike zone in LV, that's a different story. No, that's garbage. We don't need we don't need the digital strike zone and it will be. <laughs> but you're but you're right. On the NFL standard part of it, how many times do you or the XFL or the the the, the UFL and the NFL standard of the beam to do the thing? I mean Contracts have been using the fucking laser beam forever, bro. And now the technology that they got with the with the football in football right now, they they should just be able to, you know, laser that up. Because how many times does a god dang seventy five year old man pick up the football and spot it two inches this way, two inches that way, blah 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 blah? There is no doubt in my mind that, that needs to be implemented someday, sooner or later. Uh, so good homie's gonna be tuning in i thought you know i i'm i'm i may know you a little bit i thought you would have have leaned the other way but uh i'm proud of you homie i'm proud well, of you we'll see because i i say this every year and then i never get past Give week opportunity. one or two i never get past week one or two because i go these dudes aren't professional no shots to these guys but, but you know what root when i don't see routine plays being made and I, when i watch football i see I routine pl- plays being made i go okay come on this is this ain't funny here's a, here's a, i just thought of this off the cusp too this is kind of this is kind of different but with i agree with you because of the 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 play on the field in that level and you know what could hurt what could hurt this league is the NIL, right? If you want to get into the NIL and you want to get these guys and the players, they're not going to, they're not going to stay in college for two or th- two years now uh, to two, two years. They're not, they're more likely to stay in college longer now if they're decent to get the NIL money. Damn yeah, right. Because they could, or they, before they could have came out and said, Oh, I'm going to try to go to the NFL you didn't make it now they can go to the ufl right the prove himself yeah. however if the nil money is there and they somehow get a chunk of this they can stay in there in out. college and play a little bit more so the game may be a little bit less you know uh challenge you know um competitive for them so that might be a challenge for the ufl if that makes any sense but at the same time, I still think it's going to be the turning point, and I think it's still going to be great for the NFL to have this kind of as a as a um, lower level to get into the NFL. league. Of Developmental, some, of that's the word I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, you want to do a G but, League type of situation. Yeah, with it. because and it's working. It's work. Hit. It's worked. Look at the look at the, the XFL and USFL have players in the NFL now. It's worked before. It's and it's always going to work because you're always going to find these jewels out here. But think about this. If I'm if I'm 19 and I go to uh, University of Texas, hey, look, I want to I want to crib like Caleb Williams too in college, and and you know what I mean. And playing with this level of talent, I want that. So why am I gonna sit up here and say I'm gonna go to because I can't go to the pros because we don't have any. You got to go, you know, what is it? You have to be, what, at least a junior to, for um, in yeah. NFL draft, right? You, yeah, can't be, yeah. you can't be an underclassman. Of, you of can't sort. be so, 18 years old like LeBron But you James. can't divert the system like these NFL pl- or the NBA players do by going to high school and then let me go play for G League something until I meet the requirement then. 
You yeah. don't want to play with these guys and show and be playing with AJ McCarron on the Battle Hogs. You know what I mean? You don't you don't want that. You want to be playing at a prestigious university like your USC's and like your uh, Ohio State's, Michigan's on the biggest stage with Fox blasting you out on Big Monday or, or, or Big Noon and this kind of thing. You want that audience and you want that bread because guarantee you what USFL is not giving me that kind of bread. I agree. And uh, let's 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 roll out of the UFL. We're both going to be tuning in. We'll both be watching. I'll check it out. We'll watch, we'll watch that. And we have to watch NASCAR at the same time. So that's another story. We, 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 we gotta, we gotta look out for our boy, uh, Kyle Larson. Um, you know, see how he's doing. Um, I had something on Kyle Larson a couple weeks ago. We were talking or, what but what no, I, I I forgot I forgot what I was talking <laughs> about. But now? I I'm segging away from the UFL, U, <laughs> UFL, and uh, and the NASCAR. I do want to talk NASCAR, but we're not going to do it today. Okay, um, because that. I do have a couple things on that that I wanted to talk about that I don't remember right now. But we're going to stay with the NFL, and yeah. we're just gonna we're just gonna run through some some crazy storylines. I know how homie likes the storylines. I want to give I want to give homie's uh voice on some storylines. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's start with Caleb Williams. Grass supposedly the number one overall pick, which yes. tomorrow the quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers are going. He and I'm not sure if he, you were talking about the combine earlier. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's rolling in or not, or what he's doing. I know he's not Why? doing like the physical or whatever the bullshit he's doing. Pull my but here's, up to the combine. <sighs> here's my wild scenario, homie. Talk and I, me. and I, and I, and I messaged, I met, I'm, I, I wrote this down a few days ago and I don't know what kind of a state of mind I was in. So who knows what the hell's going on. But I think I think Chicago trades the number one to Tennessee, and they'll get the seven, mm -hmm. and Tennessee will take uh, Caleb Williams, which they have Will Levis, right? Which isn't a bad quarterback. Mm. I mean, he's definitely better than Ryan Tannehill. We saw that last. Uh, year. Actually, they have Will Levis and Malik Willis. So if you have oh, two yeah. quarterbacks, do you and have Malik. any? If you and have two quarterbacks, do you even have one? No. Well, there you go. So go back to what you were saying. Go Good ahead. Points. And then my thoughts turned me to, or mm -hmm. they traded to number eight to Atlanta. So that Chicago will trade the to number eight to Atlanta, and Atlanta will get the number one pick, where Raheem Morris already said he's not a Desmond Ritter fan. Because he mentioned something about, well, if they had a good quarterback, then yeah. I wouldn't be in the situation. Okay. <clears throat> Their new head coach, Raheem That's... Morris, said, I wouldn't be in this situation if they had a good quarterback. Right. So that's my final answer. However, this is set up for Barcott when we get Barcott on next time, uh, yeah. the Caleb Williams fan, quote unquote. Um, Caleb Woman is still not a number one pick. And shout out to my what? boy Greg Bachman. Uh, he's going to hate me on this too. Um, Caleb Williams is not a number one pick Crazy. in my book either. Um, Mental, yo. I don't know what's wrong with you, yo. Go I, ahead. Uh, this is my Homer pick. Penix is going to show out when we talk about the combine. This is what started this whole conversation. That's why I went with that. He will be at the combine. Penix will show out. At the combine tomorrow, I don't care what people think about his two knee surgeries, two ACLs, mm -hmm. whatever. He's gonna lighten up some fools, and he's gonna be the talk of the combine tomorrow. So all these number quote unquote number one picks are gonna have some conversations going on tomorrow at the combine. I, I agree with that because I know for a fact I, I know that he's gonna he's the type that wants to show up because he probably knows who is not going to show up. I bet you Drake May is going to show up. So it'll be those two guys that'll be doing that. And the rest of these dudes like Jalen Daniels and uh, and Caleb, they will wait until pro days and, and cater their situation like Baker did back in the day. Okay. Yeah. So I agree with you with, uh, with Penix opening some eyes up. Let's go to what you said. Do you know where the boy Caleb Williams is from originally, high school and all of this stuff? 
I do not. Look, you don't have to look any further except for the number two pick in the draft who is being uh, 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 held up uh, by a drunk owner and Magic Johnson. Okay. Washington. So the Washington football team, a.k.a. Commando Commies, Commanders. I'm telling you, watch for the push. I heard a small amount of talk. I wish I could give credit, but I did hear a small amount of talk in swapping one, two, because they were looking for how did Caleb feel about playing outdoors in Chicago under those circumstances? And he said his feedback was, I'll play anywhere. Okay. And you know what that is? That's QB talk. Right. First of he's, all, his camp said, first of all, his camp said he ain't going number one. He doesn't want to go to Chicago. And okay. then now recently, once you get to the fucking yeah. combine, now this motherfucker saying, oh, I, I love Chicago. I don't care. I love he's got to he's got to do that, though. He you can't do a John Elway. You can't do an Eli Manning. Yeah, okay? no, there's no way that's happening. These this, You can't you can't do that. Times. And I don't think that he should. But I think that if there's some way that if he did want to play for his hometown squad and play in D.C., who plans on, uh, you know, uh, the magic and this drunk owner? I can't remember his name, but every time they do an interview with him, he looks hammered yeah. at the games. Uh, but um, is is uh, planning to move the team's stadium to Virginia, the edge of Virginia, out of D.C. So, but anyway, so they're trying to build a buzz so they can get this stadium cracking. And what is the best way to do that? Is to go headlong into the hottest thing smoking. That is, you know, everybody's, you know, mini me, Patrick Mahomes. You hear all of this kind of thing. Now, he could turn out to be uh, Bryce Young. You know what I mean? In terms of playing with men out here and not yep. just, you know, whoever your competition was in the former Pac-12, you know, but at the same time, you need the splash. You need a guy who's already on Wendy's commercial so you can already have that uh, that relationship with Wendy's so they can put a sign up in your stadium. And all over the place, you know, so these are so, the things I'm thinking. Now, this is just a uh, conspiracy theorist type situations, but what, but it is, makes sense. what is Washington getting for this uh, or not Washington? What is Chicago getting for this pick swap? You know, yeah. I mean? where's the money going to come from? How are you going to promote this dude that's going to be your quarterback? And to be honest, uh, how do you move on from Justin Fields? I mean, in my opinion, I wish I had the stats up in front of me. He's not a bottom tier quarterback. No, he's not top tier quarterback by no. any means, but he's not. He's right in the middle with the other fifteen yeah. middle tier quarterbacks that, that are, are all rated exactly the they same. They could yep. all be the same yep. level, and you got thirty two teams in the NFL, right, or whatever it is, right, right. Uh, Still 32, and I think. 32, yeah. So 32 teams that you can evaluate these quarterbacks. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Cam Newton isn't one of them. So, you know, and you got, what, Mac Jones and um, the other, the, like you said before, homie, oh. you got two starting quarterbacks. You don't have one. No. In New England, he uh, Justin Fields is better than both of those guys. So, Anyway, I, I, just, I don't know. The Justin Fields thing is baffling to me. That I mean, I know it's it's probably not going to work in Chicago. They didn't even have a running back last year. Exactly. I don't. I think if Chicago gives up because whatever they're looking at the fourth year coming up and having to pay somebody, and they'd rather start back over on the cheap. You know what I mean? And on the timeline, the yeah. cheap timeline with the quarterback. I feel that, but somebody's going to come up. I think. Now it just has got to be, it's got, the system's got to be right. You got to, I mean, clearly look, look at Lamar's system. Okay. And he can't get it done. So who, where is this, where's this guy going to get a shot at? And I think that he might be one of those situations, casualties that came out hot and we just stop hearing about him. I think that's what's going to happen. Yo, it's unfortunate, but like Teddy Bridgewater, now he, that was an injury, but 
he was a completely serviceable starting quarterback in this league that fits in that box category where they all grade out the same, right? Same thing with Justin Fields with a different skill set, right? But it seems like where is the where is it going to turn, you know, for him to land? Now, if, if Washington doesn't uh, go with uh, Caleb Williams or one of these new guys, they should probably try to get, but I don't think nobody wants to do the trade. They, nobody wants to give up assets for his Justin Fields. That's why I think he's going to stall out, you know. It's sad, but I think he's going to stall out somewhere. Yeah, I feel it. It's going to be interesting. Um, you know what? That's the combine, and we'll see because you're going to hear all this talk about the combine and all that shit going on for the next, you know, week and a half. And then you got the draft coming up in April. Salary cap just went up some crazy numbers. Oh, that so was, now they the can salary throw cap a bunch of money crazy. more at free yeah. agents and this kind of thing. I don't even know what that means, right? It's just the same well, caliber of guy getting homie, more money. That's we've already means. we've already talked about the salary cap. It's really not even a thing. They can manipulate the system. They have this shit. You know, Patrick Mahomes making five hundred right, million right, right, right. a billion dollars, but Creative he only counts writing. against he only counts against like thirty million of the cap or some shit. We already know how that works. So there's a way to manipulate it, and every team has the manipulator who can anip- manipulate the salary cap. So. Anyways, you know that that's a good thing. We can we can get we can go on that f- with that forever. But I do want to close this out because you know what we've given you guys a couple episodes the uh, today. Um, we're gonna hit you know the magnificent two hundred in you know next time we roll on because you know Miles we got starts. some forty mix segments for you. We're gonna keep it short and sweet. We'll be back. It's all good. But let's close this out with this. Shout out to the man, Johnny Manziel. What do you do now? I know he did for something. taking the initiative to boycott the Heisman until Reggie Bush gets his trophy back. Shout out to him. So Johnny Manziel's been through a lot of shit. He's back into the realm of reality. He knows he's young and did all that, and now he's back. But this dude, shout out to Johnny Manziel for doing the right thing. I hope he sticks with it. I'm cool with it. What are your thoughts, homie? Well, I just want to know how he's boycott. So he's I mean, not showing up to the Heisman ceremony. So he he's just not won't going. show up to the ceremony. He he's not gonna pop in at the Heisman house. No, nope. you, know, kind of <laughs> you know he's getting that money at the Heisman house. Well, right. he might he not hang out with Barry Sanders. Well, yeah, that, that's interesting, but it's a good a, a good post to stand on because we know what's going on with the situation right now. So if the rules are as they are, if the uh, Major League Baseball decided to say, go for what you know with PEDs, how can you disrespect all the people who y'all had on the sideline, right? So it's the same kind of vibe, I personally think. It's the same thing. You know, maybe they don't go, we'll give you your Heisman, but I don't even know how that works because you can't retroactively do it, but you got to at least come out and say, you know, they, with the times, you know, they can come out and make a statement that said that the times have changed. It's unfortunate that, you know, under the old rules that Reggie Bush, maybe he can be a ceremonial something, but I don't know if they can put him on the stage. I mean, he did win it, though. That's just what I'm saying. It's so difficult from a corporate side and, and, and a trophy awarding, you know, ranking kind of situation to what they should do. The right, right thing kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know how it goes with these fools, man. I don't know how they take yeah, I mean, especially now with all this that's going on, the NIL, we can get into that for days, and I'm not a professional on the NIL. I never claim to be, never want to be, um, but uh, that's ridiculous. He never should have got his Heisman taken away, um, and especially now when it comes back to end of round. So, you know, it's wild. But, uh, you know, homie, it's good talking to you again, uh, being back face to face via web but uh we got a lot of stuff going on you know um it's gonna be a crazy march um we'll get back to it um i don't know we'll see if we can get back but i'll tell you what we're gonna have to do a a seg after my uh little (laughs) procedure or whatever the fuck we have oh hell yeah Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm oh, gonna that... be there with the microphone, like uh, like Marv Albert doing play by play from way downtown. <laughs> oh, God, 
I'd fucking hate you, bro. <laughs> you ain't you ain't rolling over to the TC, but you are gonna roll over to the TC this summer, dog. You and the wife have to roll over. We'll kick it. We'll have a good time. But uh, that's for the latter part. Uh, you know, we're gonna come back. We got we got a lot of MLB talk to talk. MLB talk. I can't believe you to discuss because I have some I have some comments on your your boy Shohei and your LAD. Um, you know, we hit on that before. Uh, there's a lot to go on. You know, it's baseball. People think it's dead, but it is. As it, uh, homie, it ain't getting younger. I, I, we're gonna bring it back. We fix, we yeah, fix a lot yeah. of things, homie. If anybody wants to know, we fix a lot of things about all star games. We fix a lot of things about NFL. We fix a right. lot of things about baseball, MLB. We fix a lot of things. We have some ideas. So you see, you see, they took my advice on the see-through pants. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to get the you got to get the woman's contingency out to watch the game. See-through Bring pants. Him. That's all you need. And then look what they did. Now it's popping. See what I'm saying? It works. All I got to do is put that in the in the suggestion box, comment box. Boom! They fired that up. Now look at all the talk. That's what everybody's gonna be talking about this year. Is see-through pants? I'll tell you, we own it, bro. I'm telling you one thing, and I'm closing this out. This is what we're in and on right now. Those fucking jerseys look like a um, kids. Uh, they look like a kids jersey print, replica. like you know the preschool, the replicas. Hundred yeah. percent look like a preschool print on a man's a men's jersey, and that's and I see that day to day. We've both been there. We both yep. know what those look like. Those letters on the, the the last names on the top of the jerseys look literally like a preschool jersey. And anywhere you go to shop to buy your jerseys, they look like a preschool jersey's name on a men's jersey, which is trash. And fanatics, you are trash and you need to get fucking better. MLB, you need to get fucking better too, because that is weak and you're killing the game. Quality control. Yeah, you better go check out your quality curls. That is weak. Them joints look like they bought them from weak Alibaba or Timu or one of these little sites that are you know, in shit, some bro. different country or something, man. I'm trying to tell you. Sad. Hey, we appreciate you all. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast platform. Go to thespunner.com for more podcasts and online content. Grab some merch from the Funner family while you're there. Check us out on YouTube, Sports Fix with Sticks. Subscribe and smash the like button. These episodes are all there. Go through, check them out. We appreciate you. Follow me on Twitter at Stick015. Follow this guy, Anonymous Big Homie, at homie underscore anonymous. He's back in the game, y'all. He's back. We're ready to get down. Um, So, homie, it's all you, bro. Man, y'all. Hey, the NFL was grading teams on a bunch of stuff, man. And the one thing that I picked up on when I was looking through is treatment of the families. How am I an NFL football player? And there's so many teams that get – a D or F grade in treatment of families who visit the game. L.A. Rams, Rams house, expensive stadium. You can't have a D. Treat my people's right, man. You paying the money. My family should at least not be standing outside in a tent. Shout out to that because that's real. But this is funner. That was Sports Fix with Sticks. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. If you want to join the show, use the hashtag Sticks and Sports. Winners don't make excuses.